Today I want to go over most of the use cases for TypeScript and React. Even if you know TypeScript well, I recommend watching this video. I'll try to keep it brief, but you may pick up some new tricks along the way and some patterns that I'm going to show you that are a little bit more advanced. If you're not using TypeScript already in React, I highly recommend it. It's improved the developer experience tenfold and it's just really helpful and stops bugs before they're even coded in. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how you type your props. So over here, we have a button and it's simply just a name button at the moment that just says hello world. And as you'll see down here, it's just got the type react JSX element. But what if we wanted to pro provide a name? So if we do name equals James, and then if up here, we define our prop to have name on it and we'll get rid of world here and we'll put name there as well. What you'll see at the moment is this is going to show an error in TypeScript because binding element name implicitly has any type. That's because TypeScript doesn't know what type this is at the moment. So the first way, which is how we do our props, is we can define it in line. So if we do name string here, you'll see that it now knows that name is going to be a string. Now this is simply just a function as that is what a component is in React. It's simply just a function. So we do it in the same way we would in normal TypeScript. Let's add a prop to this. Um, instead using interface. So if we come up here and we define an interface and we'll call this something like name button props, which is a very common sort of naming scheme. You just name it the component and then props. And then here instead we'll do name and then string. Go ahead and save that. What we can now do is we can come down here and take this out and do name button props. And it effectively does the exact same thing. So what we've done here is we've just annotated it with an interface above the component. This will allow us to extend it in the future. I'll show you why we should do this in an interface and not a type later and the powerful features that are going to come with that. Next, what if I wanted to define this type as optional? What if I didn't want the name to always have to be passed through? All you need to do is add a question mark to this. So now that I've done that, if I come down here and I delete the name from here, you will see that it can be now have a name which is string or undefined. So when I use this component, I don't need to pass through that name. The other thing we can do on top of this, however, is I don't want this to say hello comma blank. So what if I want to define a default? So in here, all we need to do is come into here and just say the default can be world. Now, when we're using this within our component, name is going to take string and it knows it's a string. Up here, it's defined as string or undefined because we've made it optional. But down here, it's always going to know that it has that default type. So it's going to be a name. The next thing I want to show is why, as I mentioned earlier, why we're going to use an interface here. It's really useful for building out a component library. For example, with this button here, let's say we wanted to pass through anything that a button could take. Well, a really simple way to do this is just to extend. And then if we do react dot component props without ref, and then in here we type in the component that we're using. So that HTML element, which is button here, if we pass through button there, what we're now saying is this interface can take in name, but also anything that the button HTML element can take in. Now, why this is really powerful is we can use the spread operator down here on props, and then we can simply pass this through to button. So if I now do dot, dot, dot props here. So what this is saying is we want a name to be passed through to our name button component here. So if I now define this as name equals James, you'll see that it still works. However, we're allowed to pass through anything that we could pass through to a button. And it's essentially a wrapper around that button where we've gone and taken out something that we need. So what I mean by this is if we come down here, we can now add, let's say an area label onto this and various items like that. We can also use the on click and that will all be passed through to the button and it's all type safe. It's gonna only allow you to type stuff on here that the button can take because we've defined it up here. So that's a really powerful feature and this is why you wanna use interfaces for that extends functionality there. Now, if I get rid of this, next thing I want to show you is um, children. So when we pass these through in React, sometimes you'll see that people type these incorrect. So if I, let's say, take out this and do children. To find your children, you're gonna to wanna to use react.react .react node. Now again, we could make this an optional just so we don't have to pass a child through there. But what react node does is it's essentially anything that react can already render. And it's the one that react will use. And the reason you use this is because you can pass through strings there like you would with a normal component. You'll see this all around when you're using components, but sometimes when you use JSX element, it won't take a string or a number or various items like that. It will only take a component, but react.react React node is the one that you're gonna want to use for that. Now, another use case is let's say 
if we didn't have this props functionality, if I go back and simplify this, what if we just wanted to pass through on click ourselves? So if I make on click here equal to, let's say an on click prop that we're gonna give it. So on click here, and then I'll use that in here. At the moment we haven't defined that, but essentially the way that you would type this normally, or at least that I've done in the past, is I would say on click, and then that's going to equal, and then I'd come down here and hover over the type to see the one we need. So in this case, it's react.mouse event handler, HTML button element. I would copy that, and then I'd paste it in up here. So if I go ahead and copy that and paste it in up here, and now that does work, and as you'll see, this now can take the on click that's correct. We could again make this optional so it knows the correct type, but here you'll see onClick is now a React mouse event handler, HTML button element. And that's gonna allow us to, when we define an onClick down here, make sure that if we, let's say, have E, this is gonna be the correct event and it's gonna be properly typed when we go to use it. And it's gonna know that you wanna pass a function through with those correct types. Now, a really cool way to do this that's a bit cleaner in my opinion, and I quite like, because it sort of simplifies things, is we can actually do react.component props and then you're gonna to wanna to put in this array here is the button. So actually you're gonna to wanna to put this in the arrow, sorry. So what we're gonna do here is button. And then from the button, we're gonna want the on click props. So this is just saying get from button the on click props. So that on click here is always gonna be typed how it's typed on a button. As you'll see here, this is now typed as HTML on a mouse event handler or undefined because that's coming through from button here. Now that's a really cool way and I kind of prefer this method because again, we've also got that type safety and that sort of type finishing here that we can see any event here that we want that's on the button element, so on a board, and this will now be a technically on a board function type like that. The last thing I wanna show, which is a really advanced sort of use case, is passing a component through as a prop that's not necessarily the children. Now a common use case you'll see for this is an icon on a button, for example, in a component library. So if I go ahead and I clean this up like so, let's say I wanted to put a icon in. First, I'm gonna use the spread operator so that I can do props.icon here. And the use case you'll see for this is, let's say I wanted to use the icon in the button, but I also wanted to make sure that it had the class styling from my button. I don't want them to pass in their own styling. So in here, I would say, let's say for Tailwind, a sort of generic one you'll see is h4 width 4. So now we have a type of props.icon class name, but how do we define this? So what you do is you'd come up here and you'd say icon, and that is going to be react.component type. But then in here, you'll expand this and you'll come in here and say, but what we want is a class name, which can be optional of string and save that. Now what this is saying is icon can be any component that can take a class name on it. It doesn't matter whether it's undefined or not, it just needs to be able to take a class name on it. So if I went ahead down here and used it, what I can do is I know smile from Lucid React. Let's see if that can import it for us, no. But if I come up here and do import smile from Lucid React, a very popular icon library, you'll see that it accepts this as a type now and it knows that Smile in here is just a JSX element, so it can take class name um, because Lucid React allows it to. So now we know that props.icon is a component that can take class name. So if this was one that couldn't take class name, it would disallow it. Now, another really cool thing you can do with this is actually change this type here to element type instead. Now, what this allows you to do, and it's not really a common use case you'd see on the icon example, but on other examples, is actually type in your stuff as strings. So what I'm saying here is props or icon can be a div, but we could also pass through smile as you saw before. It wasn't moaning about that, but you can define your HTML elements using strings like that. So that's another really powerful feature. The final note that I wanna show you and the final advanced thing you can do with component props is discriminated unions. This is a really cool trick that I actually have a separate video on this, so I highly recommend you go and check that out. I'll leave that linked in the description. And as always, subscribe for more tricks in the future. Now we're gonna take a look at use state in React. Use state is nice and simple. There's only sort of really four states that you need to know about. So what I've done here is I've done a basic just const name and set name, and we'll go ahead and we'll use this down here again instead of world. So if I put world there, I'll put name. 
But what you'll see is this is undefined because at the moment TypeScript doesn't know what you're going to pass this. So you'll see that const name is undefined. And if we actually went to try and use this to set name to let's say James, you'll see there will error out because it's expecting undefined there as the type. So how do we do this without passing a default? Well, obviously, as I just said there, the first one you could do is pass the default and TypeScript will infer that this is always going to be a string now. But if you didn't want to have a default of, let's say, James, what you can do is you can come out here and put string in here. So now that we've given the use state a type, it now knows that name is going to be a string or undefined. This means that when we go to use our set name later to change the name to something else, it's not going to error out at us because it is expecting a string in there as well. But what if this was a list of names and I take this out here? What you'll see here is if I now go ahead and put, again, this is undefined, an array in here. If I went to set the list of names to, let's say, um, James and World, you'll see that this is now erroring out because it's expecting names to be an array of never. So again, when you're using arrays and objects and different things like this, but you want to use a default value, such as an empty array, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you type these properly and pass that to use state. So there we go. Now it knows that names is a string and it's always going to be a string array, but that string array can also be empty. So that's pretty much all there is to use state. The next thing I'm going to move on to, however, is custom hooks, because it's a bit similar to use state. So if I write a hook instead of this name functionality, so if I take this out here and take this out here for a second, if I come up here and I was to say const use name, and then in here, if I define that state of name, set name, it's going to equal use state brackets, and then in here, put a string in. And then if I come down here, I would return name and set name. This is a very simple hook. Obviously you'd have logic in between here, but this is essentially the layout of a hook. So to use this down here, I would say const and then name set name is going to equal to use name. Now this looks all good on the surface level, but if we go ahead and try and use set name here, you might notice something. So if I do set name James, it's actually gonna moan at us here. And now that's because it's saying that dispatch action string has no cool signatures, but essentially what it's saying is this object could potentially be undefined because at the moment set name is a, under, a dispatch set say action or it's undefined, which isn't what we want because the reason this is happening is TypeScript simply thinks you're returning an array here. A quick way to change this is to put as const at the end so now this is going to say TypeScript, treat this as a tuple, please. So it's only ever going to have name and set name. So expect it to be name and set name. So you'll see here that we've got the same types through as we did before. So if I change this to, let's say, James, you'll see that name down here is going to change to string because it's inferring it correctly. The other way that we could actually type this, however, with getting rid of the as const, which is the quicker way to do it, is we can come up here and we can say that this is actually a string and then it's also going to be dispatch and then it's going to be a dispatch of set state action off string and then close that all up and that's the same as typing that as const down there now it's going to know again that it's expecting that tuple with the string and that dispatch action on it now i'm going to move on to use ref now for refs i've gone back and simplified that component there Use ref is really similar to use state in that passing in nothing will infer it as undefined as we're seeing here. So what we want to do is do the same thing that we did with use state and just tell it what it's going to expect there. So let's say I change this to string and that the name was ref.current. You'll see there it correctly says now that string could be or ref could be a string or undefined for that current value. And the similar thing would happen if we passed in a default here. It would correct it to now say that this ref.current can only ever be a string. The more common use case for this, however, is when you're passing your ref through to your components. For this, what you're going to want to do is change this to be null. And then the use ref, you're going to want to change this to whichever component you're using. In my case, it's going to be HTML button element. What this allows me to do is come down here and pass ref in as ref down here. And you'll see that on ref.current, we've got that HTML button element type. So now within the ref, we can access anything that we could have on a HTML button ref. 
So when we're using forward ref, you may see something like this, where we have the ref as that second parameter, and then all of our props here. At the moment, you'll see that this doesn't know what type they are, because it doesn't know what props this is taking in, or the type of the props. And same with ref down here, the react forward ref unknown. It doesn't know what ref it's using. So how do we pass this in? Well, it's pretty simple, really. All we do is come down here again and pass in a type. The first type is going to be of the element that you're passing the ref through. So essentially what we would have used in the use ref. So that's HTML button element. And you'll see that now the ref correctly has the correct type on it. It knows it's passing through a HTML button element and it's not moaning at us. And then simply after this to define our props, we just put name button props. And now it's going to know that name can be string or undefined as we've seen before. Now, the last thing we're going to check out is typing your contexts. Now, when you're using context, you may have something like this. So here I've defined my name context as create context and passed in a default value. But when I go down to use the name context provider, it's moaning at me because I haven't used value. So again, we have to pass through another default value here. Now, a nice way to do this is just to get rid of the value from create context up here. But you'll notice this is again going to moan at you because value, it thinks that this is unknown. It doesn't know what type that you're going to pass to this later. So what we can do here is we can say this is equal to a string or null. And then within the brackets here, we can put null. And now you'll see that value down here can be string or null. But when we go to use this, however, if I do const name equals use context and then that name context, this isn't exactly the behavior I want. Because what you'll see here is the context, it, the name can be string or null. When it gets to my button component, I do not want that value to be null. What we can actually do on top of this is create our own wrapper hook for that context. So if I come down here and say const use name context, and that's simply just going to be a basic function. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do const name equals use context. Essentially what we just did up there. You'll see again that this is now going to be string or null, but what we can do in here is we can do a null check. So if I do if name is equal to, equal to null, and then in here, just throw an error, no name provided in context, and then I'll simply return the name from this. Now, when we go up here, we can change this use context here to always use this hook in all of the components that we're doing. So now use name context and name here. It's always been checked before. So name is always going to be a string here. And we can go ahead and safely use it within our components, knowing that the value is not going to be null as that would have errored out earlier. I hope that you've learned something new from this video. And if you have, leave a comment if you have, or if you haven't, and you have your own tips, please leave a comment with them as well. As I mentioned earlier, check out my video on discriminated unions and subscribe because I have another video coming that I plan on doing about passing generics through to React components. It's a really powerful feature. Thank you very much for watching.